families in several states don't know where they are going to sleep. Evictions are slowly returning as states challenge the moratorium imposed during the pandemic. The trickle of evictions could soon become a flood as renters owe up to $53 billion to landlords. Here's CBS's Omar Villafranca. A wave of evictions despite a federal ban. Today in Dallas, Anthony Upshaw and his 17-year-old son are being put out of their home. They're going to show up and kick me out. My kid up there doing his schoolwork. There's like three weeks of school left before the kids graduate. The Texas Supreme Court lifted the moratorium on evictions March 31st. The Dallas-Fort Worth area has the third most eviction filings in the country. We're going to put everybody out the first chance they got. Upshaw lost his job early in the pandemic and has been struggling since. Constables placed his belongings in the front yard. Where are you going to go? We don't know yet. We haven't figured that part of it out yet. This could be the first signs of an expected tsunami of evictions as the nationwide moratorium is lifted. Up to 40 million Americans are at risk to lose their home. The moratorium was supposed to protect everybody until the end of June. Black families are twice as likely as whites to face eviction. The idea that, uh, you know, it's now okay to kick everybody out as if the virus is over with, it's not. His neighbor, Linda Bowie, is also being evicted. I'm worried, but I can't do nothing about it. I can't keep crying over it. She has 24 hours to leave. Where are you going to sleep tonight? In my son's car right there. You're prepared for that? No, I'm not, but we ain't got nowhere else to go. He put me out right now. Their landlord, Peter Sai, says his mortgage is still due even though rent is not being paid. So how much money is that that you're owed? Total about twenty five to twenty eight thousand. How long have you been losing money? About seven, eight months already. It's like America going backwards, you know what I mean? For now, Anthony has temporarily moved into a motel while his son finishes school. So the stuff, it ain't even important. It's as long as my kid, me and my kid good, we good. But Linda has not been as lucky. She's currently living in her car. Anthony and Linda are surviving the COVID pandemic, but are victims of the COVID economy. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Dallas. And tomorrow we're going to take you inside eviction court, the last chance for families facing removal from their homes. Is there any discussion about the drawing down of NATO troops near Russia or any other type of compromise? Message! Message! Yeah.